cut. The doctor is here to save the day, though. After that terrible segue, she's here and she's gonna yeah. save the day. But is she in the title picture, guys? Is, is she in the? Is she is she a stepping stone for Thunder Rosa, or is she gonna be? She's gonna be here to be do big, big things in AEW. We all know the letters AEW, but the most important letters in women's wrestling is D. <laughs> M D. Yo, bars. Damn. Bro. Hey, Britt Baker. Oh, Welcome. Yeah. Now, Baker's been around. And yo, let's be real. The big matches, the big women's matches in AEW have involved Baker, right? Like, don't forget that Baker swole match. Yes. Right? That, that was that was a big deal. All right. That was shit. That shit was dope. All right. Baker is the future of this company as far as AEW is concerned. And there's a lot of talk about her and Thunder Rosa. You know, will Thunder Rosa make way for her? Well, Thunder Rosa is 34 years old. All right? That's not insanely old. I mean, that's as old as, uh, right, Roman Reigns and shit, right? Like, we're, we're around the same age in terms of stars. But Britt Baker is 29 years old. If you're going to invest in the future of a company, look at where Britt Baker is right now. Now, that's no knock. On a woman like Thunder Rosa, because Thunder Rosa is amazing. And let's be honest, as far as AEW is concerned, their women's division is concerned, Thunder Rosa came and lit a firecracker mm-hmm. since the moment she came in as I mean, NWA women's chat. Listen, From the man. moment she stepped yep. in the AEW women's locker room, we've Legit- been talking about them different. Legitimacy, baby. So, yeah. Thunder Rosa, the person Legitimacy. that has most benefited from that is Britt Baker. Mm-hmm. Britt Baker can take all these L's now because it is the opposite of the Roman Reigns effect later. Okay. It took a long time for us to warm up to Roman Reigns. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that he was just dubs, 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 just winning, winning. He was just winning. John Cena all over again, just winning, just winning, just winning. There was no strife, right? There was no passion and pain. There was no broken glory. It was just glory. It was just great. I won the Royal Rumble. Great. Now, da, da, da. And it was like, oh, damn. Britt Baker taking all these big L's. Who won against her and Swole? I liked him. He was a good rapper. Exactly. Who won against her and Thunder Rosa? Exactly. Thunder right? The major storyline. She's taking L's, but looking good. Yep. Uh, but I will correct you. Roman Reigns didn't do that. That's the problem why we hated him. He was taking the W's. Uh, but <laughs> That's exactly what I said, you dumb bitch. That's what I'm talking about. You say he's taking the W's and she's taking the L's. You were trying to. She's compare? taking the L's. She's taking the L's. I know. Anywho, J- J- I will say one thing. Right? That's what he said. I will say one thing. Britt Baker said thing. that Redunda Rosa has been doing this for twenty years, and that is a fault. They've been actually wrestling for the same amount of time. It's not. They, they both started wrestling in 2014, 2015. So, in the grand scheme of things. They're both at the same platforms at the same time. But I agree, Britt Baker benefits from this. Like, let's remember one thing. We were not talking about Britt Baker until these matches, this feud with Thunder Rosa. We cannot disrespect ah. the fact that Thunder Rosa has made Britt Baker legitimate. You said this match about Big Spoil? Who else watched that shit? Oh. Talking about Listen, we all did. We all months ago. But what are you talking about? It was the one in the dentist's office. And this was dope as hell. First time it was brought up again in months. Oh, this guy, bro. I think Rick talked about moving forward for the rest of the year. Ten second time over here. You forgot about it already. (laughs) I think everybody's talking about about Britt Baker, and they have been for a while. Just it hasn't been the proper moment for her to shine. Where before she was taking the L's in lower card matches. Now she's taking the L's in the, in the upper card matches. Now she's got more momentum. I don't necessarily think you put her in the title picture right now. Let her mm-hmm. let her keep evolving. Like give her the momentum. Like who who in the in the women's division right now can you give to Britt Baker? All of them. I give her all of them. And that just to your point, you don't put the title on her. You let her keep working everybody else. Because look, uh, now Thunder Rosa's set. Because Thunder Rosa could do that on the other side, on, on, on the parallel. And they yeah. could run both simultaneously and keep bringing them both. And that long list of talent of women back there can start coming up slowly and surely. Yeah. Um, and that's not taking anything away from what both of y'all said, what Mischief and JP said. Because 
those points are extremely valid and they're true. But for her to have the title on her, it's only gonna it's overkill. I think. Yeah, you give you make more opportunity if you have Sheeta. Like for example, right now Sheeta's the champion. Let her have her own feud with Ny- Nyla Rose or whoever she's feuding with. Now you have an other another opportunity where Britt Baker's feuding with people. Now you have two women's stories going on, both developing women's talent. That that gets the chains, you know, going. That gets the ball rolling. Now you have more talent to build instead of it being one one story where Britt's the champion, and now there's only one women's story. Mm-hmm. So yeah. to that to that, joke, to that point, then that's why Thunder Rosa needs to have the strap because we're talking about Thunder Rosa bringing legitimacy. We need a champion that's going to bring legitimacy to that title. So that eventually when Britt Baker is ready, that slow burn storyline that we're starting off right now, if we're talking about next year, Britt Baker going over, I'm with it. Because now every every time, because I'm sorry, Hiroshida, what has she done with the title, yo? Nyla Rose, she just lost to Ty Conti. There's like, one big like issue though with Thunder. Rose, She's not Nyla all elite. Rose has the bet? Nyla Rose has the worst booking in out of everybody in AEW. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand why, bro. Yeah. It's a little tricky to How did she and, lose to Conti this week? I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah. It was. Like, how do you make her lose? It's unrealistic. It, it's. I don't know. To make it fun. Unless you build Ty Conti as this like jujitsu master, which she is, by the way. Yeah. Like, that's and the she's biggest thing with the women's ring. division in AEW. They're not developing their characters outside of the ring. There's no, like, there's no, like, do you know anything about any of these women besides what they do in the ring? They got to be on being the elite for all that, I think. There's, I no, think. there's no way to invest in them. If I know something about, uh, besides, besides Britt Baker, and honestly, that has to do a lot with outside mainstream stuff. She's dating Adam Cole. She does this. She's a, du- a dentist. Ooh. Out, of, out of her, who do you know anything about on the women's roster? So, so, that so can invest in? Do we blame the commentary then? Because technically, the commentary is supposed to build up the, the, form, the performers that we are seeing. They're supposed it's to build funny. up, give us a background, that context that we're missing, right? Especially when it's a new product. So uh, is, is it Tony Schiavone that's – is this why Britt Baker's always pushing him? Is this why – is this why – Schiavone does a great job. They do a you, great job together. Yo, JP, you mentioned great. something really – right, Shout out to Paul White and commentary and elevation this week. Yo, oh, JP mentioned God. something really interesting, right? Remember when we went to the Monster Factory and we were talking Damn. to um, Ian, right? Yep. Ian! 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 Ian from ROH, Ian Richaboni, right? Richaboni. I always fuck up his name. Right. But – he was talking about how people sweeten up the commentators so that they put you over on commentary. And I'm wondering, like, when you listen to commentary in AEW in general, like, th- let's not even focus on the women's division right now. Just in general, it's so bored. All right? There are big moments that have happened, aside from, like, Sparkler Fest. But there were big moments that have happened, like big matches, right? There's just been like a lack of storytelling to JP's point. And then there's no grandiose. Like even when Tony Schiavone says, it's staying, he sounds like he's the, he sounds like Chad Boswick, right? Rest is, rest in peace, right? After the 3,000th time that they made him do the fucking Wakanda forever shit, that he was just like, yo, I'm, I'm so over this, right? Like, <laughs> They're so over it. Tony Schiavone's so over it. Jim Ross is so Jim, over yo, it. Yo, JR. Holy so shit. What a disappointment time, that's been. Yo, I feel like JR is just shitting on the product every time he's, he speaks, bro. Like, he's like, oh. You know Remember I mean? that time he called uh, Kenny Damn, the hard, WWE hard. champion? Yup. <laughs> But look, yep. I, I can I can forgive that. That's that's a that's can an you? Error. I get it. Yeah, all right, whatever. I mean, when you've done one thing for so long, you know, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it so many good things for WWE when he was on a commentary team. So many moments, for example, WrestleMania moments that I can remember very clearly. You hear JR's voice in the background of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's yeah. not doing that for AEW. No, no, but he also didn't do it for anybody for a very long time. Because when he was doing Chip at NJP Dub, he was not the same guy. I agree. And you know what? So, Towards look. the end of his WWE run, he wasn't either. Like we so, could lie to ourselves and say he was, yo, but he really was not. He no. wasn't giving you 
that that blood that he would always give you, just like you said. It was Joe, more. He would, it, it was more he, chair shots than pops for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so wait, to be fair though, to be fair though, Jr. is not playing the same role on the commentary team that he did in WWE. That's Tony Schiavone playing that role. Uh, Tony Schiavone is the Michael Cole. No, Jr. I think is the color commentator. Uh, the other guy. Ex Excalibur? Excalibur. Excalibur. Excalibur is, is supposed to be the color guy. I, I feel like there's a lot of play-by-play, -play and I'm not too sure who's supposed to be colored, though. And that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Like, it just feels like three play-by-play -play guys who like, occasionally like, do a little color. Like, yes. just, you, have, you have some legends on AEW, right? You have Jake the Snake Roberts. You have Sting come out. Why are we hearing about their body of work? Every time you see them on screen, you should be throwing out gems about the memories and the, the highlights and the marks in the industry that they have paved the way for. Lance Archer is a sick, sick that, man. The reason why they don't do that is they don't want them to seem like they're like outdated and old. But, yeah, yeah. That shit that, is dumb. Then why did, did you sign them? That's exactly <laughs> Take yeah. it for what it is. They're not outdated, you know. Yo, they, they all, and then you <laughs> Buick and try to change, you know, sell it for a fucking 2015 Mercedes. That doesn't make sense. It's a 93 Buick. Take it Yo, for what it is. I think we Jake? can just all agree and we can just give them a chair shot and all collectively, an overall chair shot. To the head, and the, 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 it says they're old school. We'll give it some to so that headshot. Are you are you trying to say that it's time for HPC of the week? Is that what you're trying to talk about? Say, it, say it a little bit. <laughs> it's time for HPC of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Let's kick it off with the AEW commentating team and their fucking music guy too. They all get fucking chair shots. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Ruckus, hold on. I like Mikey Ruckus. He just doesn't like our Instagram. Which oh. now you can follow us on Instagram at HPC Too Sweet underscore. Cause Under fuck you, that's butt. why. I, yep. Cause, <laughs> but back to the AEW commentary, <laughs> because because that is a major chair shot, right? And I, <laughs> Joe talked about those WrestleMania moments, but it was so much more than WrestleMania moments. It was those Monday Night Raws when he walked you through someone's, you know, body of work, like JP said, that built up to like you, yo, Steve Blackman. Right? Like, you knew so much about his MMA fucking, fucking fighting no career. Reason. You know what I'm saying? Ken For no reason. For no reason. They, they were sold to you as, like, these legitimate <laughs> threats. Right? Shane McMahon. Well, you know, he's been around the company. He was sold to you as this he legitimate about his jiu-jitsu championships at eight years old. Like, nobody needs to know that shit. But, but the fact of the matter is... It added to it, right, JP? It added to it. It made you feel, yo, it, it's not the WrestleMania moments. Those are important. Those are big, bro, obviously. Bro, yeah. it, it, not, for, not even just the great moments. Think about Owen Hart's situation. Yeah. Who's the one that told us Owen Hart? It was JR. JR was the voice of the business at that moment. He was the narrator of the story that the WWF, WWE was. He, he was played, like, two roles. He, he was the guy that informed us, and at the same time, he also was our voice, right? Like, like remember him popping off at the end of every Raw when there was a Donnie Brook or a Pier 6 going on? Oh, my God! He was a family! He was a family! <laughs> right. <laughs> too? I, right. I, I, I would just say this testimonium, right? <laughs> people trusted in JR. That's what I think it was also. Like, people believed in him, and they trusted his word. Right. Yeah, and then they left us with Michael Cole. And then we don't trust Michael Cole. <laughs> so <laughs> now we got baby so Michael addition, Cole. Uh, and addition of it. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, we, we got baby Michael, Michael Cole. Cole on Monday Night Raw. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. <laughs> Tom Phillips. It's, it's, it's and literally it's, Michael Cole. It's I mean, but, but who, because who has he learned from, though, right? Yeah. That's been his mentor. It's so, just, I mean. It's a shame for, because there are good guys. I was, I was a huge fan. Of Corey Graves going at it with Byron Saxon. I thought those two. Oh, they're hilarious. They're hilarious. I Byron Saxon should be on the commentary table. The only reason to be shitted yeah. on the entire time. I think that's entertaining, but it 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 it's counterproductive to what to what we we like and and what we're talking about when we say we want more. Um, we want them to talk more about the the wrestler and. The I would argue. Yeah. I would argue it's counterproductive because then. The straight man, the shoot man, Michael Cole is not doing his job, or Tom. Phillips. Right, right, right. So right. I mean, that's that's a thing. You, it's his role to to put it all together, I guess. <laughs> if you go all back, if you go look back when Kofi Kofi Mania, right? Kofi Kofi Kingston wins the WWE title at WrestleMania. Any clip you go watch, whose voice was in the background? Emotional, Byron Saxon. Oh. 
Yep. You wow. believed it. You 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 it made you emotional. It made me emotional yeah. while yep. hearing yeah. his voice. Kofi yep. did it, man. You know, like him crying in the background. That's commentary. But but that that was that that wasn't a work though. That was a shoot because remember, yeah. Kofi was the second black champion in WWE history. Like this shit is crazy. And we just had our third. Like that that was just authentic. That was yeah. just authentic. You had Shad, uh, rest in peace, and MVP crying at a bar at a at a live stream show when that happened. Yep. You know what I mean? Two gentlemen that were through that product and now one of them is back. And they were feeling that, you know what I mean? So that, that was authentic, but that's what we need. Exactly. So that was on pop of the year. The, the consensus is that all of commentary is not just AEW. It's also WWE has lost its way, right? We yeah. go back to, like, the Gorilla Monsoon and Heenan days, which I think are probably, like, peak wrestling. Yep. Like, if you want, you can talk about JR and King, and, like, they were awesome and they were great and shit. They're, they're on your Mount Rushmore. But if Mount Rushmore is four... You've got to fit Heenan and Mons, uh, Gorilla up there as well. Hey, and then hey. Vin, and Vince, too. Yeah, Vince. Yeah. Vince. So you only get one. You get one, one add-on. That's it. But, but yeah. today, and I mean, maybe, you, you know, we're asking for a lot. But today, they don't get that kind of leeway. Because look at Samoa Joe and Excalibur. Two mm. different companies. I, I think they're the best in their respective companies at, at that. Absolutely. All right, Excalibur tries to be the straight man. He tries to give you play by play, and he tries to give you the depth, right? That that foundational basis to like get to know the wrestlers that they need to do more of. But then like Jr. Know. is bitching about the product, and then fucking Shabani's talking about Sting and some other bullshit. If, if, if I was to use a WCW champion. analogy, he's your Mike Tanay. Ooh, Mike Tanay. I hated Mike today, man. Ooh. But you know what? Mike today informed you, and and I think we all became a little bit smarter because of. That's fair. Mike, T- Mike Tanay reminded me of uh, Kurt Loder from MTV News. Remember that? Little <laughs> bit <laughs> this old school. What, what did we all become a little bit more of after WWE added a choo-choo train sound to Braun Strowman's spot on the outside of the ring when he tackles you now? Ooh. Oh, I'm, that's I right. Nobody, nobody, none of you saw it, so none of you heard it. This I week, heard it. Uh, coming from uh, my window at first. I thought, because I live near a train, so I thought, oh, maybe the, there's a train. And then I think, <laughs> no, no train. That's, uh... Oh, my God. What? Uh, that, was, man. that was painfully, like, painfully cringeworthy. Yo. I, I was just like... Easy. I can't believe they're doing this. Like, what are we going to do now? When Ricochet jumps from the top rope, we're going to go pew, pew. Like, he's going to do the old Sydney Sam shit. It's in his entrance. It's in his entrance. Okay. It is. It is. It is in his entrance. Yes, right. it is. It is. I give I give Miz and Morrison a leeway. I don't really, I wasn't really mad at them. I was more mad at Braun after that. Fuck that. Well, uh, if you want to talk about Miz and Morrison, they definitely deserve a chair shot after that terrible music video. And, <laughs> oh and at the same gosh. time, a pop, uh, as Danny mentioned in the chat, a pop. To Bad Bunny breaking the guitar over the Miz, oh. and no, yeah, we're about to get the, the Miz pop versus was Bad on his Bunny back. The po- the pop was on his back. It was on Bad Bunny's back. It's like, oh, absolutely. It was on Miz's absolutely. back. Miz's back. Be WWE champion and a bunny in one month. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yo, we're about to get Bad Bunny versus the Miz one on one at WrestleMania. I didn't see that coming. I thought it was gonna be a tag team match. I so, did. You know for a fact that Benito, Benito has been training in the WWE Performance Center, and and apparently he's going in hard because he's showing up every week. He's showing up every week, and now we know it's a one-on-one. I'm interested right now. I'm definitely more interested in that than I am in Shane and and Braun. I'm just saying. That's confidence. That's confidence for him right there. I mean, you must be confident if you could go all out by yourself instead of having your partner out there with you. Uh, Another pop of the week. He he lost his breath just smacking a guitar over me. Yo, sweet. <laughs> what was, was that gas. about? He was yo, mad was like, gas, yo. Yeah. He He's like, I just ran up the up, up the entrance way. I mean, you know, it, it might be it, it might be yo. This, this is the first time he's like doing some crazy action. He might have been so in the moment that he got you know overwhelmed. I was excited. He, he is a fan. He is a fan. Let's not forget that. Yo, quick pop to um. Peyton so what you're saying? Uh, speaking of, 
speaking of that, you're saying that Bad Bunny just jizzed on Mrs. Mac. That's what happened. <laughs> he just got so excited. He was just like, oh, oh, I, no. I see you, bitch. <laughs> no, Danny, Danny, it would be best for business. Because if you have Big Show losing to May Floyd Mayweather, uh, the Miss could lose to Bad Bunny. And Conejo Malo could go over. It's oh, the best yeah, for business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Miss Bunny paid either the way. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's close this out real quick. Joe, I want to ask you, what's the wait, 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 wait. or chest shot of the week, man? What happened? You, what, what's your heel pop or chest shot of the week? Biggest heel of the week, loudest pop of the week, or the hardest chest shot being the most negative thing of the week in wrestling for you? Let's see. Why well, you think JP's got something to say? Go ahead, JP. Yes, my <laughs> best of the week, the Lingerie Fighting Championship League. Oh, had a pay pop of the week in your pants. Uh, you had a, a shooting near Salam and Selena, aka Selena de la Renta, going up against Katie Forbes and folks. It is worth the watch. You get your money's worth, and they're doing great things there. Uh, I will view again. Yes, think what you may. Yo, but I was I, entertained. I regret asking you that, that I regret it. Oh, so That's hard. A, you see, look what you did. Look what yeah, you did. I did that. Look me over. Did. Not one nice thing. Not Talk one nice thing. Joe, what's up? All right. I did. I, all right. I got one moment that I, I was. I was like, what? What the hell is happening? It was on AEW this week. Obviously AEW, and uh, it was that Matt Hardy segment where the bunny came out. Now we're talking about bunnies. The bunny came out after the <laughs> Nyla Rose match. And they just stood there silent for five minutes, and no one knew what to do. Yeah, man. Yo, these botches got to stop, yo. What, what happened? They, they, I, ah, they're not communicating properly or something. Somebody's putting the wrong and fastest on the wrong syllable somewhere. Yeah. They were all, yeah. like, rolling around the ring. Like, everyone was trying to stall. And Matt Hardy was just holding the microphone, like, do, when do I talk? When do I talk? Yo, <laughs> Matt Hardy and me. botch. That's fair. That's fair. That was weird. It was awkward. Like, it, they, they didn't make sense why they were out there. No. It didn't make sense. It looked like the end of a, of a, of a SmackDown uh, before pay-per-view, where they're just trying to put everybody out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> go, uh, dale, dale, go ahead, yo. Danny, like, chair shot of the week, the Fiend and Orton? You didn't like the Fiend coming out of the ashes? That shit looked dope. <laughs> it did look dope. Yo, how you guys feel about his mask? Like, how you feel about that Alex. mask? Love it. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out to Charles. That's how I feel about well, it. That's well, 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 but but what do you guys think about the the rumor that it's actually Bo underneath there? <gasps> what? You know, I put out I put out this tweet yesterday or so, and I got like people coming at me left and right, like you don't know what you're talking about. No, 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 no. no. And I'm like, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. And if you look at the fiend, the new the new fiend, he's a little skinnier. Yeah. I mean. Bray could have lost some weight, you know. The, so that means Bo packed on some. he has <laughs> been gone since what, like December? I mean, hey, hey, Bo's been on a farm. Uh, uh, he off of Liv Morgan. You know what I mean? So it, it makes sense. <laughs> and if anybody is gonna play him, it should be his real brother. So That's I mean, fair. it does make sense. Hey, and um, the, and this and this this all provides for many opportunities as far as two fiends coming out, right? Yes, especially for WrestleMania. Like and I'm glad, days. I'm glad that you're saying all that because <laughs> one of the pops of the week has got to be the Hall of Fame announcement, right? Hey. We see the mayor of Tennessee, yes. one of the hey, most, no. all of Tennessee, the whole state, the mayor the of the whole, whole state, the whole state, the whole state. And, uh, and the mayor of all of India, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> the great Kali, <laughs> and Kane making their way into the Hall of Fame. Big pops for hey. Kane. Facts. Well deserved. I, I, mean, I, I get it. Cha for great Charlie. Charlie. Hell shot for for Kali though. What? Really? Uh, like why? I mean, I get it. Market share in India. It's like one of the largest, you know, markets they can enter into listen, overseas. But why was Yao Ming always voted into the All Star game? You know what I mean? I'm just. He was eleven foot two. He was tall but, as hell. But he he has all... at least the fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? Like he. What's the fundamentals? Yeah, hey, Kali. The fundamentals. He was an all star. Yeah, Kali just... didn't even know who, who had to get pinned in the match. There was a Royal Rumble where he was throwing people out and surprised <laughs> at how far they would go. He's like, oh wow, <laughs> fuck, fuck. Yo, he was just tossing people. He's like, yo, I can't believe I threw him that far. I think I think he thinks it's real. 
But have you seen him play ping pong? He, he killed the guy. How about Leslie when he, forget when he, when he helped Ginger Mahal in the Punjabi Prison match with yeah. Oren, and at the end he's the one holding up the title, like he yes. won it. <laughs> Upside <laughs> down, <laughs> which is a Kali tradition. Ginger Hogan moment, and he thought he won it. He thought he won it, but oh, you can't dismiss the impact that Great Kali when it comes to the WWE and wrestling has had in India. All the schools, he's, the schools that he started, the wrestlers that have gotten their shine now. We we have a shooting the Shalom and um, uh, Alberto de Rio, his ma- former manager, Ricardo Rodriguez. Yes, sir. And he's talked about his experience with the Great Kali out there, going out there to train with individuals. So I think, as old school mentioned, there's a bigger market, you know, share of, of opportunity. Listen, if Coco Beware could be in the in the Hall of Fame. Coco okay. Beware. No, 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 that's no, no, no. Not Coco. That's, where, that's Coco how we Beware end it. Is, that's, that's how we that's, end it. That's not where you draw the line. You draw the line at like somebody like Drew Carey and shit, bro. Like, <laughs> star, okay, we can, we, can, we, can that, we can end it right there, Drew Carey. That's a great way to end it. Joe, <laughs> thanks for being on the show tonight. I appreciate your time, man. Please I tell them, you. tell the fans where they can plug you, man. Where we can find you at Twitter and all that. Awesome, awesome, man. Right, well, first, I appreciate you guys having me onto the show. It's been fun. Like I said before. The energy you guys got is crazy. This is nothing <laughs> like I've ever seen before. So I appreciate you and your energy. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate Where you. you. Can find me, uh, The Angle Podcast, on uh, all social media platforms. It's at The Angle Radio. Uh, I'm live tweeting shows now every day of the week that they're on. All right. Uh, <laughs> bunch of interviews and stuff like that. I have an interview coming up. This week I had Candice Michelle on there. Ooh, next nice. Week, yeah, it was a great one. And next week I got JTG. Coming on, we're talking about Shaq Gaspar. We're talking about Bobby Lashley becoming WWE champion. We're talking about the Fear Award and WrestleMania. All this good stuff going into WrestleMania season. Uh, Everything is the Angle Podcast or Angle Radio. So beautiful. I'll be tuning in, brother. I'll be tuning in for sure. No doubt. No doubt. That's right. You fans, show love to your local podcasters, man. WrestleMania week, man, is what we do, is what we love. It's going to be the busiest week for everybody. Make sure you catch what you can. And JP, why don't you tell the figure fans what they can do on their way out from visiting Make sure to like and subscribe.